Mm. Absolutely. Now, Evan, this is probably a topic that people don't really like to talk about, and I, I don't see any many discussions about it, but what actually happens if the ETF provider, um, something goes wrong and maybe the ETF provider does close down? What happens to your money invested in those ETFs? Yeah. Um, well, fortunately, we've not had that situation in, in the history of the ETF market in Australia. Mm. Uh, I, I don't That's see good. anything <laughs> at the moment, so um, in, in theory. Uh, uh, so as, as with any other managed investment, the, the, the assets of an ETF are, are effectively segregated. So they're, they're held by a custodian. And that custodian is you know, a highly, highly regulated entity um, that, that holds assets for, for ETFs and also for, another, for a range of other institutions. Um, but those assets are segregated and they're held in, in accounts that are in the name of the ETF itself. So the, the issuer or the responsible entity for the, for the ETF will have effectively functional access to those, fun, to those assets to be able to transact on them and to, to manage the ETF. But the actual beneficial owners of those, of those assets are effectively the end unit holders of the ETF. So if the ETF issuer were to fall over and, and effectively disappear overnight, those assets remain in custody for the benefit of the end investors. And to clarify that the custodian is a separate entity to the ETF issuer. Yeah, yeah. In most cases, the custodian is a separate entity. Uh, there's certain types of, um, you know, I've seen some things like uh, some of the, the new um, cryptocurrency unlisted funds, not, not ETFs at this stage that have self-custody and things like that. But um, uh, in that case as well, there will still be a segregation of assets. Um, so yes, in, in general, 99% of the cases, it is a separate entity. And, then, and I think it's worth pointing out that ETFs are very well regulated in Australia because we've got obviously ASIC, but then we've got the ASX as well sitting in between that, right? Um, from, from what I can tell, it seems there are a lot of protections in place. Yeah, that's right. So, so ASIC sets the general framework for regulation and, and the exchanges are um, effectively the, the bodies that operate those markets. So they're, in a way, the, the institutions that um, kind of enforce the rules. Um, so they, they have a, a remit of certain products that they're allowed to let onto the markets. Um, they have their own internal policies as well. Um, but yeah, you're right. There's, there's a lot of regulation around and, and there's no, um, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely restrictions on the types of ETFs that can be, can be listed and the types of service providers and things that can be involved in ETFs as well. So there's a whole lot of due diligence done around the whole process of an ETF from the underlying investment all the way through to, to how the fund operates. 